WBBM FM, Chicago. And chewing gum. The refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment presents for your listening enjoyment the lineup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we will take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. in right in the middle of it. Oh, starting late. Pete's got a full house tonight. Sixty-five. Sixty-five, eh? Yeah. More coming in every minute. Forty-two since three o'clock. University and Highland Division picked up ten. <laughs> three from Harbor Division. Uh, two gunmen don't walk into Siemens National Bank and hold it up every day. You know, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything on the gun? Uh, serial numbers filed off. Haven't been able to bring them out so far. The car wasn't any good at all. Lab's been going over it since three o'clock. It's clean. Ah, uh, maybe something will turn up here. Well, I hope so. All the witnesses show? Uh, yeah, all but two. The, the tall man with the glasses in the first row is Jeffries, the head cashier. Mm-hmm. Uh, man beside him is a bank guard. No. On the right there are the seven tellers who are on duty. The Strickland, Ollinger, and Vorey is sitting with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of messes up Ollinger's vacation, huh? Yeah. Uh, Crockett and Murphy with the other guard and the three customers who were there when it happened. I spread them around. It, over there. There. Uh-huh. Well, that'll be a long session. Yeah, so it seems. Now, here we go. Yeah, I'll be with Asher. Right, Ben. Now, may I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention? Uh, hi. Hi, Ben. Thank you. Warm night, huh? You My said it. My Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications... Please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Got a match? Uh, Keep it moving, Mm -hmm. boys. All the way to the end of the stage. That's right. All the way across. Now turn and face the front. Keep your hands to your sides and your heads up so the people can see what you look like. Speak right out when I ask you questions. Okay, number one, over to the circle. Thomas Alexander, Grand Theft Auto. Get your hands out of your pockets, Thomas. Oh, okay. Where do you live? 216 Race Street. How long you lived at that address? Eight months. You own a car? Not anymore. Finance company. Any weapons when you were arrested? Huh? Any weapons when you were arrested? Well, no. Stand up straight. What's your business? I'm a cook. You're cooking a restaurant? Is that what you mean? Yeah. What restaurant? Pioneer Grill, 42nd and Pioneer Boulevard. How long you worked there? Uh, two years. I never been in any is trouble. That, is that where the officers picked you up? Yeah. When? Last night. You speak Italian? Huh? Can you speak Italian? Understand it? I... No. Any other language besides English? No. Slide on down. Number two, Frank Bernard. Murder. 
Give us your address, Frank. Well, that's 2325 uh, Longmont Avenue. At a hotel, apartment, or what? No, it's just a friend's place. He put me up. <coughs> you own a car, Frank? Yeah. What kind? Color? Well, it's a 51 Buick. It's a Roadmaster. Uh, it's convertible. It's green. Any weapons on you when you're arrested? Did you hear me, Frank? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I, yes, I was carrying a 32 automatic. It was a Webley. Pretty nice gun, Frank. Have a permit to carry it? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. What's so funny, Frank? <clears throat> Nothing, Sergeant. You don't have to look down at the floor. Nothing to be bashful about. Let the people see your face. Sure. Who was with you when you were arrested? Nobody. What about Anthony Vincent? Wasn't he with you? Well, not exactly. He was dead. Were you at the coroner's office this morning? Yeah. Did you see Anthony Vincent's body? Yeah. Anyone else there you know? No. What about Robert Custer? Well, I don't know anybody named Custer. He was a police officer, Frank. A patrolman. Oh, him? Oh, yes. I saw him. Yeah, but I didn't know him. We think you killed him, Frank. I didn't know him. Number three, Brooks Knight, assault. Number three, Knight. Okay. Sleepy, are you? No, no, no. Where do you live, Brooks? Queens. The last place you slept. Jasmine Hotel on Gilbert Street. Where do you work? I don't. What kind of a car do you drive? 39 Merck sedan. Anybody with you when you're arrested? Yeah, my wife, Mary Jane. Mary Jane Knight? Yeah. Those are clothes you were wearing? When? When you were picked up. Yeah, I guess they are. Don't you know? I guess I didn't pay too much attention. I had a couple of drinks. Yeah, so they tell me. Well, I don't see why I land here if I want to have a drink or two. You're in for assault, Brooks. Well, you guys met my wife. What else could I do? <coughs> Got a mouth down to the size of a boxcar. If only she'd keep her mouth shut once. Just once. That's all I asked her to do, but No. She had to go on and on and on and on. It was embarrassing. Yeah. Well, Wasn't it pretty Bill. embarrassing oh, to get picked up for slugging her in a public come place? To, I was yeah. so mad I could have killed her. I mean, you nearly did. Some well, turnout. Yeah. Well, you'll have a chance to cool off. Carl Smiley called me ten minutes ago, Ben. Wanted to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Said it was something you'd be interested in. You've been helpful for poor. Talked like it might be the Seaman Bank thing. Here's a number. It's a booth somewhere. No. Said he'd wait for you to call him back. All right. Use that one. Okay. See the file on Becker? Yeah, there's an FBI kickback there, too. Narcotics? Two counts, possession and peddling. Federal men will be in tomorrow to talk to them. That's supplementary, aren't they? Yeah, you better shoot it in before you leave tonight. I will, Captain. Hello? Hello, Carl? Yeah. Who's this? Uh, this is Lieutenant Gus. Oh, yeah, Lieutenant. Sorry, I didn't recognize your voice. Uh, uh, say, Lieutenant, can I see you right away? Well, sure, Carl. Come on down. I'll be... No, no, I don't think that's a good idea. How about meeting me someplace? This is important. How about the corner of 10th and Vallejo? Vallejo and 10th. Okay. Be there in 10 minutes. Says he's got something that's going to help. He wants me to meet him at 10th and Vallejo. Got any money, Ben? No. 20 bucks. Oh. Well, then you better take this. You better wait here, Asher. Right. Oh, Carl. Hello, Lieutenant. How you been? Oh, fine. What do you have, Carl? Well, I hate to talk here, right out in the open. No. You want to sit in the car? No, no, no. It wouldn't be good. Uh, let's duck up the alley, huh? Sure. And this far enough, Carl? I guess so. Y you know, I'd get it pretty quick if I, if I was seen with you, don't you, Lieutenant? Nobody's going to see you here. All right. How's this? Oh, it's a big risk I'm taking. How about that other one, huh? Yeah. Yeah, the city pays for it, doesn't it? No. No. Well, you want to wind this thing up, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you ever hear of Don Smiley? Well, who's that? Well, guy I know, Ron. Met him at the parole office a month or so ago. How long has he been out? Oh, just a few weeks. I think maybe he can help you. Why, Carl? Uh, had a drink with him the other night. You know, talked about something big he had coming up. Bank job. I, 
I didn't figure he was making too much sense being on parole and all, but when, when I heard about this Siemens thing this morning and, and then read the descriptions in the paper, it, it sure sounded like Don Smiley to me. You don't know for sure. No, I, I'm just telling you what I know. The uh, paper said two men. One of them lost his hat and his gun. They said he was tall and bald-headed. It, it sure sounded like Don Smiley to me. Mm. You know anything about his parts? Uh, just Smiley. Uh, no idea who he was working with. When he told you he had something big in mind, didn't he mention any names? Oh, no, no, no. Did you ever see him with anybody? Just saw him around. Never with anybody. You sure? Well, sure. J just, just saw him around. Where can I get in touch with you if I need you? Well, uh, I'll phone you if you like. Say, uh, tomorrow morning. All right. Stick around, Carl. I'll be seeing you. Yeah. Uh, you just look up Don Smiley, Lieutenant, and ask him some questions. He won't have the right answers. Well? You Don Smiley? Yeah. Police. I'd like to talk to you. Well, what about? My name's Guthrie. This is Sergeant Asher. Hi. Come on in. This place don't look so good. My wife left me a couple of weeks ago. I'm not very good at keeping house. What are you doing these days, Smiley? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm working. That's what I'm doing. Where do you work? Uh, Corwin's driving. I'm second cook there. Mr. Frankly got me the job. Now, who's Mr. Frankly? My probation officer. Oh, he's real good to me. What hours do you work? Uh, most of the time, I wake uh, 11 in the morning, 7 at night. Sometimes I wake 7 to closing. Uh, it's pretty nice, though. I make 48 bucks a week. Who's your boss? Mr. Kerr. He manages a place. Uh, hey, look, fellas, I'm not in any trouble. I had enough of that. We didn't say you were in any trouble, Smiley. This is just routine. You tell us what we want to know, huh? Oh, sure. But I hope you don't think I'd be dumb enough to take any chances of going back there. Oh, six years is about all a man can do. Okay, Asher. Yeah. Oh, you, you ain't gonna find nothing in there. That's j just this room, see? There's a bath over there. The bed comes out of the wall. It's not much, but it's better than up there, I'll tell you that. What's on your mind, officers? I'd like to know if you worked this afternoon. This afternoon? Oh, no. No, I didn't, no. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, it's after nine right now. You gonna work tonight? No, this is my day off. I get one day off every two weeks. What'd you do today, Smiley? Well? I'd like to know what you've been doing all day. Well, I'm sleeping mostly and waking on my model here. I learned how to make these things a long time ago. They're pretty nice, huh? Yeah? I'm going to paint it red as soon as I sand it down a little more. Mm -hmm. You've been in here all day? Yeah. Eat here? Yeah. I got a little icebox. But now I'm just fixing to go out for dinner. I'm pretty hungry. Can you prove you've been here all day, Smiley? Mm, I don't know. I haven't talked to anyone. Anyone phone you? Uh, No. Nobody. But I've been here. Took me all day just to do that one wing. How could I you go You own in... a brown suit, Smiley? Huh? Brown suit. Do you have one? Oh, you were in a closet. You saw I didn't have one. You, you, you fellas really got something wrong. I haven't broken parole. I haven't done anything. I wouldn't do anything. You know that. You, look, you can talk to, to Mr. Franklin, my parole officer. He knows I'm working hard and I'm keeping my nose clean. You, you ought to talk to him. He'll tell you. Hey, where's the phone? Uh, just out there in the hall. Okay, right. Hey, please, well, what's this all about? A man answering your description held up Siemens National Bank today with another man. About your size, coloring, wore a brown suit. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Oh, no wonder you're checking around. Well, I ain't gonna get help you about this. I know you got your job you. to do. I'm sure glad I'm not in any of that kind of thing anymore. Yeah. Landlady know you? Yeah. Okay. She see you here today, maybe? I don't know if she did or she didn't. By the way. I emptied the garbage cans once. I went Smiley, out... Smiley, they pulled your package downtown. The people from the bank recognized your picture. Eh? What? They must be crazy. I've been here all day. All 13. They're still down at the lineup. Okay, Smiley. Well, look, you guys, I told you. I don't do things like that anymore. Come on, Smiley. I won't go back. Now, don't try to make me do something I didn't want to do. Come on, Smiley. No, don't, don't take me down. I, I've got to be the wife tomorrow. Come on, now. No, no, look. I've got to finish my model. And no, don't. Don't. Friends, wherever you are... Whatever you're doing, 
you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports or other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. Oh, Smiley, feeling better? I feel terrible. Maybe you'd feel a little better if you told us all about it. But there's nothing to tell you. I don't care how many people looked at my picture. I didn't help no one hold up no bank. Where'd you get the $4,000? Hmm? The $4,000 you had stashed in the radiator in your apartment. Well, I saved it. Bundles of 500 SEMA National Bank wrappers. Come on, Smiley. It'll be better for you, better for us. Who'd you work it with? Jack Shannon? Who? Jack Shannon. I don't know anybody named Shannon. Oh, that's funny, Smiley. Warden told us you were in the same cell block with him. I don't know anybody named Shannon. Who was it, Smiley? I don't know. I, tell you, I don't know. You worked the job with him. No, I didn't. I didn't work no job. And I'm tired. We're all tired, Smiley. We've been up half the night. You know we have to keep on this. I'm hungry, too. We'll all have something to eat when you finish telling us about it. Smiley? But I got nothing to tell you. Well, we're going to find out sooner or later. You might as well tell us what you know now. It'll help when you're arraigned. Now, what do you say, Smiley? Uh, did you talk to Mr. Frankly? Your parole officer? Yeah. Oh. Pretty disappointed in you, Smiley. He went to a lot of trouble for you, getting you the job at the drive-in and all. But I haven't done anything We to don't need a confession to get an indictment, Smiley. There's enough to put you right back where you started from. And that's what we're going to do. Now, how about it? You want to make it easier? I tell you, I got nothing to say. Okay, Smiley, that's it. Take him down and book him, Pete. All right. Yeah, hey, Quine. Frankly's here, Ben. Can you see Smiley? Hold it, Pete. Mr. Frankly's here. He wants to see Smiley. I don't want to see him. He's right outside the door, Smiley. You'll have to see him. I don't. Can, can, can you send him away? I'll, I'll see him later. You afraid of him? No, oh, no, I ain't, I ain't afraid of him. I, I just don't want to see him, that's all. Look, um... Do me a favor. I'll tell you all about it. And not now, Quine. Tell him tomorrow morning. Right. Oh, uh, send in a stenographer. Yep. Now, sit down. Yeah. Jim Sanchez. He's from Michigan. You people don't know him. Oh, we'd like to meet him, Smiley. Where is he? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You worked it with him, didn't you? Yeah, but I wouldn't know where to start looking for him if I had to find him. How'd you meet him? What does he do? I've known him for years. First time at the correction school. Then I ran into him a couple of weeks ago. It was his idea, the whole thing. The idea was we pulled the one job and, and divvy. That's the way we worked it. Mm -hmm. You talked it over first, didn't you? Sure, we talked it over. Well, how'd you get in touch with him? He came around to the drive-in. How many times? Just once. You mean you planned it all out in one sitting? Mm -hmm. We talked on the phone, too. He called me a couple of times. Did he have a car? No. Nothing except the one we picked up for the job. Didn't drive a car when he came over to see you? No, he took a bus. Well, he must have mentioned where he lived. No, he didn't. What uh, kind of a guy is he, Smiley? Just a guy, just a guy. Hard, tough, what? Good with the ladies, maybe? I didn't ask him. Good dresser? Yeah, nice clothes. You know if he worked around town anywhere? I don't know that. But I'm sure he didn't go out of town. He's too smart to go anywhere for a while. What'd you do after you left the bank? We took the car over on 42nd and split up the money and left the car. Where'd you go? I hopped the bus. Where'd Sanchez go? He started walking up 6th Street. Is that the last time you saw him? Yeah. Well, how about it? Didn't he uh, phone you later today? Not today. But he phoned before? Yeah. 
What were you going to do with your part of it, Smiley? Well, I thought I'd just sort of save it and try to find a little place for myself. I didn't like living in that apartment. Now, how about Sanchez? You ever say what he was going to do with his money? No, he didn't talk much. Oh, yeah, he said he wanted some new clothes and a new car, and that'd use up practically all he got out of the job. No, it wouldn't, Smiley. Huh? He's got $20,000. But I only got four. We were splitting 50-50. Were you? Another game, Ben? Okay. Deal them. Yeah. It's midnight already. Hmm. I, I have to get somebody out yeah. there to relieve Asher pretty quick. Yeah, you start. Okay. Oh, don't need it. Neither do I. Oh, this one either. Oh, thank you. Well, what do you know? Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, anybody would save threes. <laughs> Well, come on, Ben. Give up something. Oh, you're impatient. Uh, thank you. Welcome. This is from Michigan, Ben. I'm sending a package on Sanchez Airmail Special out of here by morning. And this picture came over on the wire. Okay, let's see. Mm, pretty young looking. Yeah, it was taken when he was 19. That would make him 32 today. Three arrests, one conviction. Fell from Lansing on car theft, 1933. Uh -huh. You want a supplementary now? I can wait till the rest of it comes. No, I'll get it out there. Okay. Well, I've had enough. Well, don't you want to finish the game? <laughs> it is finished, Pete. Huh? <laughs> Jen. Let me see. <laughs> Look. Oh, no. <laughs> that was Asher. You run across something. Yeah? Yeah, about 10 o'clock tonight, a man who gave his name as Paul Dorsey bought a new car at Exchange Motors over in Highland. The manager says he paid all cash for it. Description fits Sanchez pretty well. Hey. Dorsey gave a 10th Avenue hotel as his address. Asher checked it. No one like him registered there under any name. Exchange Motors? Uh-huh. Well, they only sell foreign cars. Yeah, he bought a nice little Jag. Well, shouldn't be too hard to spot. Not hard at all. The car has to be serviced before he can take it. He tried to talk them into staying open and working on it for him, but they wouldn't do it. Said he'd be in to pick it up first thing in the morning. He, uh, he might go right uh, back to the garage and not even come in the front. Uh-huh. Um, what do you want me to do if he does come in? You don't have to do anything, Mr. Zeman. <laughs> That's the first all-cash customer we've had in three months, and he turns out to be a bank robber. No, we aren't sure about that. He might not be at all. Well, I hope you're making a mistake. I can see your point. <sighs> Wish he'd come in right away and get this thing over with, <laughs> one way or the other. Well, relax, Mr. Zeman. Nothing to worry about. Yes, well, I certainly hope you're right. I suppose you fellas know what you're doing. Well, we'd like to think so. Hi, Pete. Ben? Sergeant Cargan, Mr. Zeman. Mr. Zeman, the manager here, Pete. Oh, yeah. Uh, fine. I want you to stick by him here in the offices, Pete. Yeah. Coin on the street? Yeah, all set. Crockett and King in the alley. Asher's out back. Well, that about covers it. See you a little later, Mr. Zeman. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, just huh? Um, will there be any shooting? No. How can you be sure? This man you're looking for carries a gun. Carried a gun when you robbed the bank, didn't he? Well, there won't be any reason for it here. He's coming here to pick up a new car. It's already paid for. Well, uh, sometimes there is shooting, isn't there? Sometimes, yeah. Well? We'll handle it, Mr. Zeman. We've done these things before. Now, why don't you and I go back in the office? I'd like to see some of your catalogs on these cars you're selling. Uh, well, oh, yes, I suppose so. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. You know anything about these things? <laughs> I'm learning. A sweet job. Yeah. Don't well, you think you'll pick it up? Ben, nobody could pass up coming in for this. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? You, in coveralls. <laughs>
lot, Ben. Mm. I'd better phone in and get a new detail down here. Think it's worth it? Two men will be enough. Uh, it's a long day. Yeah. How's Zeman? Yeah. Couldn't stand the suspense. Went home with a headache. Hmm. We still got ours. Yeah. Wonder why he didn't show. Uh, search me. Hold it, Pete. Huh? Taxi out front. Uh, could be him. Sure could. He's coming in. Yeah. That's him, all right. Look, Wine spotted him. He's covering the entrance. Okay. Let him come up. Hello? Hello. Mr. Zeman around? Well, he's out right now. You, Mr. Dorsey? That's right. My car's supposed to be right. Hey. We're police officers, Dorsey. I'd like to talk to you downtown. What? Hey, take the hand. Oh, honey. You have a permit for this? Well, uh, yes, of course. Let's see it. Well, I don't have it with me. I left it home. And where is home? What? Where do you live? I have a hotel room on 10th Avenue. 1935 10th? Yeah. You aren't registered there. We tried to find you there last night. What is this? You people don't have any rights. Is your name Dorsey? Yes. Have your social security card with you? No. Who, who carries a thing like that? Driver's license? No, I, I don't carry a billfold. I use a clip. What do you want with me? I don't understand this. We'll straighten it out downtown. Come on. Uh, you can take me down, but you aren't going to straighten anything out. I'll tell you that. This way. I don't get this. I don't get it at all. Uh, what's it all about? Aren't you going to tell me that much? Sure. Don Smiley told us all about you. He signed a confession last night. Who? Huh? Don Smiley. The man you pulled the seaman's job with yesterday. I don't know anybody named Smiley. Know anybody named Sanchez? No. You don't know very much, do you? Uh, just a minute. No, yeah, what? You really got Smiley? How do you think we got you? Okay. I'm Sanchez. We know it. I'd like to see my car before... I mean... You're looking at it. Huh? Get in. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup, where before you passed the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer... Listen again next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect... The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by E. Jack Newman, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Peter Leeds, John McIntyre... Howard McNear, Herb Butterfield, Joe Duvall, and Benny Rubin. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Dan Coverly speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.